since it's a new year, I thought, hey, why don't we go and try out a new window manager? Because I'm pretty sure I switched to BSPWM roughly around January 2020. So maybe I just make this a trend and every year, every six months, I try out something new. So a couple of guys in my Discord convinced me to try something out and I recently switched over to Awesome WM. There was a lot of choices out there I could have gone with, but this is the one that I decided to try out first. It does look different to the way it looks with the default config, but really I've only done some very minor things to it. So what we're going to be doing today is looking at my first impressions. Basically, all I've done to it is added in some sensible key bindings because by default, Super Shift Q, which in BSPWM I use to kill a window, is bound to kill the window manager, which you can probably imagine how that went for me. And some other little things like removing pointless window decorations, because by default there's like a bar up the top and you can like close out a window and things like that. I don't need that. It also has like the window name as well, which also is kind of pointless. Basically, the only time you need to see the window name is when it's a floating window so you can actually grab the window to move it around. And also I cleaned out some useless bindings and useless things in the status bar like the start menu which I'm never going to use. And I think there's a button you can press to actually bring up a list of your key bindings. Once again, I'm never going to use that. I know my key bindings. I don't need an extra binding for my bindings. Now you might be wondering what is Awesome WM and why is it special? So Awesome WM is a dynamic tiling window manager. Basically that means that it can operate in a tiling mode or it can also operate in a floating mode, but unlike something like BSPWM, it has a very heavy focus on layouts. Now, a lot of these layouts are going to seem very similar to you, and that's because this initially started as a fork of DWM. But one of the major benefits it has over DWM is how to configure it, and that's because instead of relying on, you know, C files to actually modify the source code, you go and modify these Lua files, and that's how you actually configure it. So as long as you know Lua, you can basically control everything this window manager does. Sadly, I don't really know Lua at this point, outside of the little bit of configuration I've done, so I'm still very much learning it as I go. Now, the first thing I noticed between this and BSPWM is the way that it actually handles tiling. So Awesome WM very strictly follows layouts, whereas in BSPWM you can sort of do layouts, but most of the layouts that come default with it are relative to where you're actually spawning the window from. So say I wanted to split a window off of this node right here. It would do the tiling based off of this window, and I ran it in a spiral layout so it would spiral from where I'm at. Whereas even with the spiraling layout inside of Awesome, which is this one right here, it doesn't actually care which window you're actually focused on, it's always going to spawn the window in the next spot of the spiral. So in this case, it's going to be right here, spawn another one, it's going to be here, again, again, again. It doesn't actually care where you're focused at. The reason for this difference is that BSPWM is this weird hybrid between a dynamic tiler and a manual tiler. So a manual tiler, basically, you have complete control over exactly where the windows are going to be placed, and a dynamic tiler is what we have here, where you have layouts that you're working with. Basically, it does both of these. It doesn't do either of them exceptionally well, but it does have its own sort of unique workflow. But you know what? I really do miss just having these strict layouts like i3 does and going from there. It is nice to know exactly where my windows are always going to spawn, even though it was a little bit difficult to get used to again. If I do just want to break the layout completely, I always have the option of just making floating windows and then placing them exactly where I want them to be placed. And I, d I don't really particularly mind the way floating is done here. I kind of prefer the way that BSPWM has it, where you just have like a hotkey, and then when you press the hotkey, then you can do your window manipulation. But having the bar here is kind of a decent compromise, and I can get used to it again. But typically, I'll just be running it like this with like maybe three other nodes besides the master node. I'll usually have one master node. I guess I can like increase the number and have like this grid layout. This might make more sense for certain tasks, but usually it's just the one master node. And then I'll have something like a media player here and maybe something for notes and then some other thing maybe. But that's usually the most I'll go. Because this is basically DWM, we don't actually have access to different desktops. What we have instead are numbered tags. Now, this might look like desktop one, and you can use these to basically work the exact same way as desktops in other window managers. But 
they do have a fundamental difference. So let's say that we have this HTOP window on my second tag, and then all of these other windows on my first tag. Normally what you'd have to do is move that window over to the desktop you're on and then move it back when you're done. But you don't actually have to do that here because what you can do is temporarily show it on the same tag that you're on while it still exists on a different tag. Personally though, I've been working with things like i3 and BSPWM for so long that I don't really know if I would actually get used to working with a feature like this, but I should try it out and see how it actually fits into my workflow. Now, as for key binding, as you would expect, it's done inside of the rc.lua file, obviously done in Lua. Now, there's two ways you can go about doing key binding. You have the awesome way and you have my way. And I prefer to do it my way. So basically what I've done is everything specifically related to awesome WM. So doing things like modifying window sizes, reloading awesome, modifying the number of master nodes, running Lua code, making floating windows, everything specifically related to window management is done inside of the Lua configuration. Everything else, though, I've kept inside of SXHKD. Now, the reason why I've done this is because I want it to be easy to switch to a different window manager. And if I ever decide to, say, go back to BSPWM, I want to have a working configuration already there rather than having to build it up again from scratch. And even if I don't delete my SXHKD configuration, over time they will start to diverge from each other. Maybe I'll try out new applications, add new bindings in. So for me, it's much easier to just maintain the SXHKD configuration and maintain the rc.lua file, even though, yes, it is going to be slightly slow. It's going to use a fraction of a percent of more CPU and a little bit more RAM. I don't really care about that. It's not really that much of a performance hit. As for the launcher, I'm well aware that Awesome does come with a built-in launcher. I haven't really used it that much. I've used it for like five minutes. I might go back and actually use it properly. But for now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sticking with D-Menu. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm using D-Menu for far more than just an application launcher. I'm also using it for doing things like opening up config files and opening up my bookmarks. And I don't want to have to go and modify all of this stuff just so it can work inside of Awesome and then go and modify it again or maintain two versions of it if I switch to anything else. It's much easier just to keep going with D-Menu and just make it fit inside of Awesome instead. Now, I did mention I didn't really do much in the way of theming, but you can probably already see that it basically fits my theme anyway because the way I theme my system is so very, very basic. Pretty much once I actually go and theme this, the only difference you're going to see is instead of having this like light gray box up here, it's going to be a little bit blue. So am I not really taking advantage of all of the theming that you can actually do inside of Awesome? Absolutely. And that's because I don't really care. I've never really been much of a theming person. I like having a very minimal theme with the font that I like and the colors that I like, and that's about it. If you want something that's like Unix porn, go and look at the Unix porn subreddit. You're not going to get that from me. There's already plenty of those desktops out there, so if you want to go and you know download one of their config files, go ahead and do that. I'm not going to build that for you. Now, one thing I actually am using that is built into Awesome is the bar up here. So I'm not using my poly bar like I did on BSPWM. And I'm probably going to stick with this because I actually really like some of the stuff you get from using the Awesome bar. I haven't fully explored it yet, but from what I've seen, it seems to have much better mouse support than what existed inside a poly bar. So say I wanted to go and click on this up here. That will actually go and minimize that and minimize this one here. And then I can go and click it again and bring them back. Honestly, that is all I really need from it, but I will properly explore it at some point. And because it's actually built into Awesome, it has much more integration into how Awesome actually works rather than trying to hack stuff into Polybar to make it sort of function. Now, I'm not sure which modules I'll actually bring over from my Polybar because a lot of the stuff I had in it, I don't necessarily need to have there. For example, I had things like my weather in there and I had my CPU usage and my CPU temps. If I wanted to check those things, there are other ways I can go and check them. I might keep my number of packages I have to install. That does seem to be pretty useful, but I can probably slim the bar down massively from what it was. 
Either way, though, I will be adding in some new modules and actually trying to learn Lua for myself and seeing what it can actually do. I have been reading a bit of the awesome WM documentation, and that is how I worked out how to have these window gaps here. If you aren't actually sure and you do run awesome right now, basically what you can go and do is enable something called useless gaps. And basically, they're useless gaps. The only problem I have found so far is related to playing games in full screen. So when I'm streaming, there are reasons why I might want to break my mouse cursor outside of the full screen game window. In BSPWM, there was a very consistent way to actually go and do this. Inside of Awesome, it seems like it works maybe 50% of the time. Basically, what I try to do is force my mouse cursor over to the other screen. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not really sure what the deal is there. So I might be missing something. But once I work that out, I shouldn't really have any issues actually working with Awesome. It seems like games on Steam are playing perfectly fine with it. I did notice in the case of Borderlands the pre-sequel, which is kind of buggy inside of Proton, at one point it actually tried to spawn in a window that looked like this, rather than being in full screen mode, and then try to cram 1920 by 1080 into this space here, which was quite amusing, and you can go see that on my gaming channel. So if there's anything you want to see me try out with Awesome or any videos you want me to do on it, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. I'm not really sure where I'm going to go with it right now. For now, I'm probably going to just, you know, work on my configuration, make it feel nice for me. And then from there, I will start doing some random videos here and there. But I'm more than happy to take some suggestions. Thank you guys for watching. Before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to, I should probably just bring up the list before I actually start talking. A special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Montez, Will, Chico, Bendo, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter, D, Tony, Tushar, and all my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, there's some links down below to my Patreon, Subscribestar, LibrePay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere, and then this channel available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.